Now that you're working on a personal project, you might realize that it's easier said than done to finish a personal project. In this video, I'll share some tips and advice that may help you finish your passion projects. Although I come from mostly an animation background, I try to keep it as general as possible so it applies to a lot of personal projects. Hey guys, it's Tini Kapantoa, and today I kind of want to talk about sharing tips and advice on completing your personal passion projects. For this year, I just wrapped up on a personal project which is a proof of concept video that I've been working on for a while. I just wanted to finish a sizzle reel for it, and that was my personal project for the last few months. Now, if you have a personal project that you want to get done, whether it's a comic, whether it's an animated project, or some illustration piece, it's always good to have a strategy and a plan for finishing these projects. And many times, most people just procrastinate or never finish anything. One of the first things I want you guys to think about, and maybe you can write this down on a paper or on a document, is write down all the benefits you can gain from the project when this project is actually finished. Another way to think about it is, why did you start in the first place? What are thoughts that come to mind that excite you when you finish this project? I want you guys to think about the best results that can come out of this project. So for me, for someone who wants to work on short films and really short animated projects, I think about film festival submissions and possible awards, which can lead to interviews and traveling to different places in the world. I'm going to be real with you guys. My personal projects have led me to opportunities and rewards, which a few years ago, it actually helped my visa case that allows me to work and live within the United States. When I made the 2D animation course that took me a year and a half to finish, I wanted to make an educational video course that gets people excited for 2D animation, but it also led to passive monetary income. Therefore, when a production ends or I get let go from a job, I'm stable enough to take my time in looking for new jobs or to work on personal projects. Sometimes I do these really small comics that are meant to be a joke. My goal is really just to make people laugh and something that's meant to be casually enjoyed. The goals and rewards for your personal projects don't have to be amazingly huge. It has to come from a genuine place. Even if that reward is small, that's still good enough. Maybe you just want to gain more followers and traction to your website or your portfolio. Speaking of portfolio, maybe these personal projects can be added to your portfolio, which may lead to collaborative opportunities in the future. Now, the second big advice I'd like to give is to break down your whole process and make a schedule out of it. In animation, we have this thing called the pipeline test, and it's really just a test to see if a production workflow works. We experiment with how much work goes into coloring, animation, backgrounds, all the necessary steps to get a final image from nothing. If you're doing comics, start off with doing thumbnails and then bring those thumbnails into layout, rough it out, and then do the cleanup. And if you're painting, start with roughs, then the flats, and then rendering. Whatever medium or personal project you're doing, the point of doing the pipeline test is to see how much work it takes to do each step. And whether you need to compromise, sacrifice, I'll talk about that stuff later in the video. So when you are doing a test or you're basing it off your previous experiences, record the amount of work you'll need to do for each step. Now once you know how long each step takes, break it down into a calendar or a schedule. Set dates and deadlines for yourself. Put a date on when a certain step should be finished and save a few days in just finishing a single step. This is after knowing how long each step should take so you have a clear idea in how many days or how much time you need to finish a certain milestone. Or you could be more vague where you just put a month to a certain step. For the Dream Bandits proof of concept, for example, starting June until October, I just worked on animation from rough to tie down to cleanup. And I knew by the end of November, I just wanted to be done. So November was just labor work that includes coloring, that also included compositing and speed painting backgrounds. One thing I wanna say about thinking about your schedule is to be realistic. Meaning that don't treat it as you're going full sprint every day on the project and that schedule is really tight. Maybe go one third of a full sprint, a light jog. You probably can spend the next six hours working on a personal project after a full-time job, but that also leads to burnout and burnout leads to procrastination and just giving up on a project. Working on personal projects can be a marathon, especially if that personal project is big. So when you're thinking about your schedule, think about days or weeks for times when you're not working on the personal project at all. I have two reasons for suggesting this. One, take breaks and enjoy life. Two, what happens if you get sick? Or what happens if there's a circumstance that puts things to a halt? 
You need to have days that allow for accommodation and to cushion those. Be realistic. Maybe you have a full-time job and you only want to spend an hour to two hours per day working on a personal project. So make a schedule that works with your lifestyle while being able to spend time enjoying life. Now the third tip that I've been doing recently and that's helping me keep track and stay focused on work is to record your process while you're working on your project. When I'm recording myself, I tend to stay more focused on my work rather than browse the internet and do things that procrastinate. Another thing to keep in mind is so that you can make archive videos. So when you want to make a making of video or behind the scenes, you have footage. For my video capture software, I've always used OBS, Open Broadcaster Software. Not only do I record what I do on my computer, but I also use it to stream. That way there are people watching you while you work. It's free, so you can just download it online. Now, with that being said, put in some interval breaks. I use an app and a stopwatch called Pomodoro, and there's a browser base for this too. Whereas for 25 minutes, I'm just working, and after those 25 minutes are done, there's a five minute break, and then another 25 minute of working, and then a long break that can be 10 to 15 minutes. But honestly, do what's best for you because your work style changes over time. Now, the fourth advice I'd like to give is to make a deadline that matches an event. When I work on my own personal projects, I like to think about certain events and festivals to reveal my finished projects. So you can think about events like exhibitions, conventions, film festivals. Maybe you're trying to make a deadline for a gallery. So if you wanted to finish an illustration sequence, maybe set a gallery for yourself for a certain day. Sometimes you want to be done before a certain holiday. For the Dream Bandit's proof of concept video, I just wanted to be done before Thanksgiving. Better yet, before the year ended. When I finished my 2D animation course, I wanted it to be done before CTN, but I never showed it at CTN. But I did use that as a reference when finishing a personal project. Not only does a deadline just force an urgency to finish a project, but think about how that deadline or event matches up to why you started it in the first place, and why that event can lead to the benefits that you're aiming for. The fifth advice I'd like to give is to have friends or a check-in group to show process or progress of your work. I always like to show works in progress to friends to get feedback, support, and encouragement. I'm kind of secretive when it comes to my projects, but I'm not too secretive to hide it from people I really trust. So I avoid sharing it to everyone, I only share it to people that I know I can trust. Meaning that these people will actually help me get to my goal rather than resist. The people I select will help me get closer to a goal that I want rather than veer away from it and give something that's completely out of what I'm aiming for. Because there are people who just like to criticize just for the sake of feeling entitled. When I worked on Crayon Dragon for example, an individual I respected a lot gave me some feedback that didn't sit well with my goal. So from then on, I only communicated with people who can help me get closer to that goal and if I strayed away from that goal, they can help me bring me back. They can be objective, they can be critique, and they can give me suggestions. As long as it strengthens the project the way I want it. Now, another advice I'd like to give is to compromise and sacrifice. Maybe your original vision is way too ambitious, so how do you find ways to trim it down to make it more realistic for you? So maybe you can start removing elements in your project that aren't too important to you. Find alternatives and work with parameters. Maybe deal with limited colors or no colors at all, just black and white. Sometimes these parameters can add and strengthen to your film. It makes it feel more focused and condensed. If you work in animation like I do, maybe you can think about ways to have more budget and limited animation. Or maybe trim the running time so you can actually finish something. Ask yourself this, if a certain element was removed from your project, would it change this project drastically? If you feel like that one element gives the project a purpose, don't remove it. If it doesn't have a drastic role for the project, or if it's just meandering and it just takes away from the actual purpose of the project, Project, then you might want to consider taking it out. One big advice I'd like to give, and this is something that's very personal to me, is prioritizing certain projects. What is realistic for you and your life? Think about the lifestyle you want to lead and the lifestyle you currently have. Life stuff gets in the way and that's a fact. And depending on the scale you set for your personal projects, personal projects can take up a lot of your free time. An individual who's single and lives by themselves may have more flexibility than someone who has to take care of a family. You want to have more life experiences outside of your work. 
and obligations to fulfill that's outside of your personal projects. So maybe you wanna do a personal project that's more small and casual. But what if you're someone like me who likes to do a lot of personal projects at once? Having a lot of ideas and personal projects is actually a great thing. But the problem with this is that if you're working on them all together at the same time, you're not spending enough time for a single project to be finished. Therefore, you might not end up finishing any project at all. So this is when you have to actually start prioritizing. Think about things like what is the urgency of a certain project to be done right now? How close are you to finishing a certain project? Is there less work for a personal project? Does it make sense with your current lifestyle? If you were to finish this project as soon as possible, how would it make your current lifestyle better? Maybe the next few weeks, the next few months, half a year or the year is just dedicated to only one personal project. So you can get that one personal project out of the way. Understand if your projects are long term or short term and think about which one works well with your lifestyle. Now, great advice that I should have done more when I was at school is to create incentives and rewards for hitting certain milestones when working on your personal projects. The thing about motivation is that it's fickle. Passion and things can just die out easily. So you need something once in a while to ignite that flame. Yes, there are rewards and benefits you can gain after finishing that personal project, but that's still a while to go. So think about giving yourself a small reward for finishing a milestone in your project. Think about incentives you can give yourself. Finished all the rough animation and tie down? Treat yourself out to a nice dinner. Finished a hurdle in your project? Go out with friends and have a blast. Maybe you finished a major step and you're at a really good place. Maybe buy yourself something pricey as a nice gift for yourself. Or go on a short vacation trip for the weekend. If you're a social butterfly, maybe throw a party celebrating a certain step that's finished. But you want to give yourself rewards for hitting a certain milestone in your project. Sometimes I like to share work in progress with friends and their excitement kind of motivates me. So again, think about incentives. So the last bit of advice I'd like to give is just to keep moving forward. Stay disciplined even in small increments. I like to use the gym as an analogy because it kind of matches perfectly well with a personal project that does take time. When people start at the gym, they usually go very hard at the first two weeks and then they go less and less because when they miss one day, they'll say, oh, I'll go the next day. And then they end up missing that day and they'll say, oh, I'll go the next day. And then they end up not doing anything at all. And that similar thing can be done with personal projects, whether it's animation, comics, or whatever you're working on. You kind of have to give yourself some small discipline to work on these personal projects, but be realistic. Again, don't work full sprint and blow your wad. Maybe set yourself a time limit. Only spend one hour or two hours on your personal project a day, and once that time runs out, just stop working on it. And keep doing that until it becomes more comfortable and it can be sustainable. And then if you want to increase that time later on, you're free to do that, but be careful with that. Because thinking about how much work you have to dedicate yourself to a certain day does stress you out. Because again, there will be days when you just don't want to work on your personal project at all, or you just don't have the energy to perform your optimal. And maybe the schedule yourself is just adding more pressure. Just work on it little by little, even if each day is just a small fraction of the work you usually do. That's why I always encourage you guys to work on a schedule that allows you to spend time taking breaks and enjoying life. And the only times you should be going full out is when you're in the final steps of your project, when it's close to being done. Not saying you have to go full out, but if you had to, I feel like that's the best part to be at. Also, try to remember the reason why you started in the first place, what made you excited about it, and what's the best outcome for you at the end of the project. And that's why my first tip might be one of the most important ones too, to help you remember that. Anyways, those are some of the tips and advice I'd like to share on finishing personal passion projects. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.